Okay. Well, we're going to um, say welcome to the new elected train. Um, this is on the rules of the Auditor of State's Office, the Department of Local Government Finance, and the State Board. Um, I thought we'd just take a few and introduce ourselves and how we work together and uh, what each office does. Um, so to get started with a few little housekeeping items, uh, when you came in, we did turn your video and your mics off. It does help with the bandwidth of these sessions. Um, so, but we will be turning them back on at the end to give you about 10 or 15 minutes of questions um, or just to introduce yourself. We uh, will be recording all of this session and we will be putting it on our website next to the packet of information you could have uh, you know, downloaded or printed. Um, it's at the top of our website. I know I think we put that it was under presentations and training. Uh, it's in the same section, it's just it had to be moved up at the top uh, for technical reasons at the last minute. Um, we do have a chat box down at the bottom that if you're having any, um, you know, concerns or technical issues, I will be monitoring that and try to help you, um, at, at, you know, for that. And um, I think with that, we're going to go ahead and um, head, you know, turn it over to Kim Zeller from the Auditor of State's office. And she's going to get us started. Let me stop sharing. And Kim, you should be good to go. Good morning. Uh, welcome and congratulations on your new positions. Um, I truly believe that serving the citizens of Indiana is one of the greatest privileges that you can have. And it speaks volumes that your constituents have placed that trust in you. Um, I'm Kim Diller. I'm the Director of Local Government at the Auditor of State's Office. Today, I'm going to just talk about what the Auditor of State's Office does, and then specifically what the, the Division of Local Government does within the Auditor of State's Office and what our role is with you. So with that, I'm going to share my presentation. So um, the Auditor State's Office is led by the Auditor State, um, Tara Klutz. It is an elected position, and she comes to us from Allen County, where she served as the Allen County Auditor um, from 2011 to 2017. She is a CPA, and um, before her time at Allen County, she was an auditor for PwC and for Crow. Um, our local government team is led by me. I'm the director, and then we have Janie Cope, who is our specialist. Um, I've been with the Auditor State's Office since March. Um, I started a week before the shutdown, so most of my experience has been doing this from home. Um, so <laughs> it's been a challenge, um, but it's been fun. I uh, work, I've been with the state um, since 2014. I was the chief financial officer for IDEM, um, the Department of Environmental Management. I, before that, I was at the Department of Health. And then before that, the majority of my career has been in local government. I worked for the city of Lawrence. I worked for the city of Indianapolis. I was the deputy auditor for Marion County. So that's a bit of my background. Um, I really wanted to take this position so that I could get back in touch with local government. I truly believe that you guys are the ones that have the most direct benefit um, or I guess the direct um, impact on day-to-day -day life um, for our citizens. And it's fun. So I wanted to take this position and just kind of get back a little closer to the local government. So what does the Auditor of State's Office do? Um, so we have five divisions. Um, the first one to talk about, um, basically, so Tara is the Chief Financial Officer for the state of Indiana. Um, so she's responsible for a lot of the same things that a county auditor is responsible for, for the county, but she does it for the entire state. Uh, we do accounting and reporting. So we are responsible for maintaining the state's accounting system. 
and we do all of the financial reporting. And so we do the CAPR for the state, which is the annual comprehensive annual financial report. So this report is done um, as well as with, for some counties, uh, we do it at the state level. We also do our schedule of expenditures of federal awards. Um, this is uh, what is referred to as the CIFA. Um, and so they do all of the financial reports. This division does all of the financial reports um, for the state of Indiana. Then we have accounts payable who approves all payments and does all of the vendor management for the state. And so we do this for all of the different state agencies. And then, of course, we do the same things that you guys do where we issue um, replacements of lost or missing state warrants. Then we have our internal control division. Um, they mitigate risk by ensuring policies and procedures are documented, maintained, and carried out successfully. This is a very important part of our um, office to ensure that um, things are done correctly. And, um, and then also to, we, we really stress transparency in our office. And then we have our payroll division, um, who is responsible for paying approximately 30,000 employees throughout the state. And then finally, we have our local government division. Our uh, two biggest um, responsibilities are reviewing the settlement and the abstract. And then we also do the collections of revenues, and, and then we distribute revenue out to all of the local units. So for our, in the local government division, we have the semi-annual settlement review. So right now we are in the midst of the December settlement. Um, June and December, May, well, I should say May, June, December. These are our uh, busiest months of the year um, because we, every county prepares the settlements and we have a certain number of forms that have to be filled out. And there's a checklist um, that each county auditor has to complete. Um, there's about seven different forms that are filled out for settlement and then sent to us for review. We actually contract out with Crow to review prior to us. They do a kind of a, a set review for each county. Then they send it over to us and we do a final review. And then we give the counties a pre-approval and say, okay, everything looks good. Um, you can um, move ahead. And then you get your final approval once all of the fees that are owed to the state are paid and then you do a final certification, and then you actually do the settlement, which is basically what your, what the settlement is, is taking the property taxes that are collected by the treasurer, and the county auditor then distributes those taxes out to all the varying units within the county based on the tax rates. So those are all based on the abstract. So the abstract is the next review, and that's going to be done in the spring. So that will be the first thing for any new county auditors that you're going to be doing that um, comes to our office. It's due by March 15th, and it's submitted through Gateway. Um, the, the abstract is actually going to be reviewed by the DLGS this coming year, um, but we're going to be working very closely with them. The other part that we do, and probably it's, it's more of our daily tasks than the local government division, is that we collect all of the different revenue from the counties. So this is revenue that you guys collect, and then you send it to us. Um, so we collect court fees, we collect fines and forfeitures, um, there are settlement funds that we collect, so like um, excise tax, there's um, excise tax that's due to schools, um, and that would come to us, and then we distribute it out. And then we have the judges' supplemental payments um, because the, the judges get paid by the state, and then just other miscellaneous revenue that gets collected. And then we also collect revenue from other agencies, mostly the Department of Revenue um, and the BMV. 
All of this revenue gets collected and then we put it into funds here at the state and then distribute it out to local governments. So all of these distributions are based on um, requirements that are in the state code. And the link that we have here that's listed on the slide is a link to the AOS website in which it has all, the, all of the different distributions and the state code that's associated with each of those distributions. Um, so we collect the um, motor vehicle highway and the local road and street taxes. That's collected, well, it's, it's charged by the BMV, it's collected by the Department of Revenue. Then they give us reports and say, okay, this is how much we collected for each unit. And then we distribute it out to the units in Mochito. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we also do that for cigarette tax. Um, ABC gallonage tax, innkeepers tax, food and beverage, um, which includes the stadium tax for our donut counties. And then we have supplemental wagering and wagering tax. So these are all revenues that are owed to each unit within or county within the state, but it's collected at the state level. And then we turn around and send it out to you. We have other distributions. We have the financial institutions tax and the local income tax. So these are taxes. The local income tax is something that you, um, on a local level, um, vote to decide if you want to collect. And then those income taxes are collected at the state level along with all the other income taxes for the state. So, um, and then, it's just easier for the state to collect it all at once and then we distribute it out to you. Then we have CVET, uh, our commercial vehicle excise tax. Um, we do have a um, money that we distribute out for county engineers. This is the supplement um, payments so that every county does have an engineer, a certified engineer on staff and we pay um, a stipend to help cover some of that salary. Uh, we also have money that we send out for counties that have covered bridges. Um, and then we have national forests. Um, we have a national forest in the um, state of Indiana. And so we collect money from the U.S. government and then distribute it out to the counties in which they um, are placed. So most of these distributions are um, done on a monthly basis. Some are semi-annually, but the majority of them are done monthly. And you'll get a schedule um, at the beginning of the year of this is how much, some of them like local, in, local income tax and financial institutions tax will be telling you this is how much you should expect to collect in this coming year, which will help you with budgeting purposes. And, um, and then we'll also give you a schedule of here's what, what distributions to expect and when, because we have them set either the first of the month, the 10th of the month, or the last business day of the month, typically. Um, so if you have any questions whatsoever, once you get into the office, because you're gonna get there and then you're gonna go, so what was that girl's name and what was she talking about? Um, so here is my phone number, and then if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to reach out to me. And then this is our email address, the local government auditor.in.gov. This is a shared email address by both JC and I. This is where most of your communications are going to come from us, and um, any communications that you send to us so that we can both see it. And then also, any settlement questions or abstract questions, those are gonna go there as well. Specifically on the settlement questions, Crow also has access to this email address. So any, um, any communications that you get from our office for the majority will come from that email address. So once you get into office, just make sure that um, this email address is in your contacts. So then that way there nothing bounces back or nothing hits your junk email from us because what comes from us is not junk email. It's extremely important. So um, with that, are there any questions for our division? 
questions just till the end so I can unmute oh, them. Oh, okay. Okay, that's cool. If that's okay? Yep. Okay. So I'm going All right. to... Do you need me to stop sharing my screen? Uh, yeah, I think we can. Okay. Okay. Well, we really appreciate that. We're going to turn it over to Wes uh, Bennett, the commissioner at DLGF. Good morning. There he is. Good morning. There you go, Wes. Take it away. Am I, uh, am I unmuted? Uh... Good. All right. Well, I want to share. I want to share my screen too, Ricky. Um, so I think I'm going to go up here and uh, share my screen. Tell me if I'm. There we go. So uh, welcome. Uh, and we have. Correct uh, me if I'm wrong, but we have new auditors and new county treasurers. Correct. All right. Super. Um, and so I, I'm going to take about 15 minutes and. Um, my 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 slide deck is will, will be attached to this, but I, I really wanted to give you some hands-on visual. Um, I'm a visual learner, and, and and so for those that are visually uh, that are visual learners, I wanted to really kind of give you some uh, firsthand and uh, actual uh, visuals of, of the LGF as I talk a little bit about what we do. And then I, I want to share, and I, I think we'll, we'll at the end we'll, we'll share some some thoughts, some best practices. Um, I'm a former elected official, uh, uh, and a clerk treasurer for the town of Plainfield for um, for almost 13 years. Uh, when I came into office, um, I had zero experience uh, as a clerk treasurer. Uh, I had a lot of experience in the private sector and in banking, investments, uh, insurance, uh, mortgages, real estate, and so forth. But it took me a while to translate that and to transfer that knowledge into uh, being the chief fiscal officer for the town of Plainfield. And I, I'm sure it's not lost on you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that that uh, that as a county auditor, you're the chief fiscal officer, as as uh, Kim just said. Uh, and and so it's important to understand that you are uh, you are the CFO for a multi-million dollar operation. And I mean multi-million dollar operation. And as I reflect back on my tenure with the town, uh, we had uh, we had 250 full-time employees. We had 275 part-time and seasonal FTEs uh, over the course of the year. Uh, from an, a capital asset standpoint, we had over 350 million dollars worth of assets to track and manage. I think Clerk Treasurer's office. We had an annual budget between our utilities, our TIFs, our non-reverting funds, our general fund, and, and MDH, local road and street, all the way down the line uh, 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 with over 110 uh, funds. We had an annual budget of, of over $175 million. So it, it, it was an awesome responsibility. Uh, I know we, we're confident that you're up to it. But understand that uh, this is uh, th this is a business. It's a governmental business, but it's it's a multi-million dollar business, as I said. So, so what is DLGF? What is DLGF uh, here to do for you? Uh, and and that's our main focus. Uh, you, you you've heard it said, uh, Ricky uh, and Lori, and from the Auditor State's Office, and and you'll hear it from DLGF as well. Uh, we're not here for us. Uh, we're here for you. So what what can we do to help you? Uh, whether it be on the abstract side, on the budget side, on the assessment side, on the tax and billing side, there, there's, there are all, all sorts of uh, moving parts here. So from a local, the Department of Local Government standpoint, we're focused uh, on several things. First of all, uh, in order to get, get us, if you can see my cursor up there in the top left-hand corner, um, the best thing, the, the, uh, let me go back to the, uh, to, to the beginning here. If I can get this to work, there you go. There's our there's our address, uh, in.gov forward slash dlgf. That's how you get to the, the dlgf website. It'll take you to this um, to this uh, first page. Um, and if you really want to contact us, if you really want to know about us or contact us or, or find memos and presentations, it's all down here on the left hand side uh, of our website. So just to share with you a little bit about my executive staff, you'll see our pictures there. Uh, myself, Barry Wood is our assessment division director. 
Fred is our budget division director. Uh, Jenny Banks is our communications. James Johnson is data analysis. And Scott Maitland is our uh, information systems. Uh, one, uh, we're in transition right now. Scott Maitland is, 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 um, uh, is carrying a dual role, a dual title. He has just been appointed uh, in the last two weeks as our new chief of staff and is, in, 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 in is also doing the IS division. And then uh, we're missing uh, we're missing uh, Emily Chrysler, who is uh, who was uh, uh, appointed to our general counsel role from her deputy counsel role previously, uh, with the departure of our general counsel and chief of staff Dan Shackle, who uh, went to BMV. So uh, we, we're in transition. We're missing Emily's uh, picture there. So hopefully we can get that up there this week. But anyway, so those are, those those are our divisions. And uh, to give you an idea of what they do, uh, we're going to go back up here and you're going to contact us. And I'm just going to take you right down uh, the list here uh, of how to contact the Department of Local Government Finance and give you just a little flavor of, of what we do uh, on a day to day basis for uh, local counties, local cities, and towns. Um, so, from a, um, let's see, from a legal, uh, we have to update this. So from, from a legal the division standpoint, um, we're, uh, this is our contact information for Emily and Dave uh, and uh, their email addresses and phone numbers. Uh, assessment staff. Uh, let me get down here to actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to roll back up here to um, here we go. So let's go to assessment first. Uh, assessment field staff are, is, is, is geared towards the assessors. Uh, their contact information is here. And we also have a map. Uh, so th this is going to be uh, uh, a map that's available to you, uh, the treasurers, the assessors, and gives you an idea of our assignments and what the assessment uh, folks do uh, for each county. That entails uh, uh, assessments uh, and ratio studies and uh, auditing and uh, taking a very high level look at our uh, at each assessment that's done uh, in, in each county. At this point, uh, the uh, assessments will uh, be effective on January 1. Your assessor's office, as you may or may not know, has been working on assessments through the whole year and will be starting ratio studies in February and March in order to uh, develop the, uh, the values for each parcel in turn, which will then be attached to the billing, uh, tax and billing statement uh, that goes out in May. So uh, your assess, assessment office, uh, your assessor's office has, has been very busy this year uh, doing land reassessments, doing improvement uh, going out and, and, and looking at uh, improvements that have been done on the parcels. They work with vendors similar to what uh, auditors and treasurers do when it comes to uh, doing the assessment process. And we work hand in glove with them in, in order to get uh, uh, the assessments done in a consistent level across all, all 92 counties. So again, we're we're uh, we look at it from a 50,000 foot level. Your county assessors are looking at it from the ground level. They'll feed us the information over the course of the spring, and then we'll uh, double check that through our ratio studies uh, and and make sure that it's within the parameters of uh, of the assessment practice. So. I'll move on from the assessment division uh, and go into the uh, go back uh, to the budget division. Uh, and again, you have uh, the contact information uh, for all our budget uh, division. Uh, this is critically important to the county auditor. Uh, these are your direct links to the uh, to the uh, department. And uh, again, I'll go down here to the bottom and, uh, and look for and give you an, uh, give you a, a flavor for. Um, what our budget uh, field representatives will help with as far as questions. Uh, they'll help schools with bus replacement fund questions. Uh, they'll certainly help cities and towns in a similar fashion that they help the counties. Uh, we also deal with conservancy districts in addition to the townships, uh, libraries, uh, and so forth. So we're right now in the throes of the Form 1782, which is uh, the, the next to the final step of budget certification. And so uh, you will be uh, walking into uh, uh, most uh, of you will be walking into a situation where the budget's been adopted, it's been certified, 
uh, and it's just a matter of making sure that you put the right budget into your software. Uh, and again, uh, we can help you uh, with the numbers. Uh, we can help you make sure that it's we can give you the right numbers. We certainly can't put it into your system, and you wouldn't want us to. But um, um, so we, we certainly uh, you want to get a, get a hold of your budget representative, uh, budget field rep as soon as possible by clicking on that map. Uh, you can get a, a, a feel for wherever you're at in the state. You'll be able to find the contact information for your uh, budget field rep. It's right here on this uh, on that link. Uh, again, if you want to paste, cut and paste that link, or if you just simply go back here to the uh, to the uh, budget field representative's contact information and click on the map, uh, it'll take you to that. Transitioning on down to data analysis, this is this is this is one this this division is small but mighty when it comes to uh, uh, the importance to the agency and, and to the state. Quite frankly, we have we have literally millions of data sets uh, that this data analysis division is responsible for. Uh, in addition, uh, and this gives you an idea of our uh, staffing there. Uh, there will be uh, data on uh, gateway sales on the budget, on debt management, uh, data compliance is part of the uh, part of the role of this of this division. Uh, we are responsible for certifying uh, your uh, software vendors when it comes to tax and billing uh, and and other software that 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 they uh, uh, sell to you and that you use on on behalf of uh, behalf of the taxpayer. Uh, so this division is uh, you don't hear a lot about. In fact, I didn't even know about it uh, when I was with the, with the town. I didn't even know they had a data division. So um, it, it's again, it's very um, uh, small but mighty, and, and they do an important role when it comes to budget and uh, software certification uh, for local counties and, and the vendors that we use. Information systems is another critical uh, uh, division in our agency. This is, uh, we are one of the few agencies that have a, a team of, uh, of uh, system um, developers. Uh, Scott Maitland is the director, as I just mentioned to you a few minutes ago, and is our new chief of staff. Um, th these folks are the ones that are responsible for developing the software, keeping the databases uh, running uh, that, that we all use, um, providing uh, support for not only our agency, but for uh, other agencies as well. Uh, they're the main uh, lead when it comes to uh, standing up and uh, developing and uh, operating Gateway. Um, so uh, they are uh, critically important to not only our agency, but, but the, the seven or eight other agencies that, that use Gateway uh, and the State Board of Accounts uh, work very, very closely with uh, the State Board of Accounts in, in helping to develop uh, their applications on Gateway. So. Um, uh, again, this is uh, this, this is uh, this is one area where we are we are very uh, cognizant of when it comes to the need for uh, systems developers. So uh, uh, we're we're uh, in the process of beefing up this uh, this area because I will tell you um, when I get on my soapbox, uh, one of the issues on my soapbox is is that we all need to do a better job of using technology. Um, we can develop it, but we need to keep it stood up. Um, Department of Revenue is, is in the middle of a $60 million upgrade of, mul of their multiple systems, which is important to us as local units. It's important to you as local units because that's where your uh, that, that's where your revenues are uh, collected and then distributed back to the local unit. So uh, that um, technology debt is uh, something that that you folks need to be aware of and to stay on top of. So, and so we are as well. Uh, let's see, what did I skip over here? Uh, I skipped over our legal division, um, uh, and that wasn't on purpose. I'll go back to it here. Um, but uh, our legal division uh, will be uh, will be uh, looking to hire another deputy general counsel here uh, starting uh, soon. Uh, and uh, this this uh, legal division is um, critical to us in helping us not only during the legislative process, which we're really in the in the throes of right now, and will be for the next four months. Uh, but it's also important for our rulemaking, for both uh, the assessment rulemaking and the uh, budget rulemaking. Uh, our assessment rulemaking process, uh, Emily headed that up over the last 18 months. 
uh, and believe me, we we speeded that up, uh, and it still took 18 months. So uh, uh, our new uh, assessment rules will be coming out uh, here shortly. Uh, we're in the, about halfway through the process in developing new uh, budget rulemaking. Uh, David uh, Mursars is heading that up, and so we will uh, uh, we will have that out at about uh, sometime by the end of this year or by the end of 2021. Sometime in late 21, we'll, we will have uh, budget rules, which has never been done before, uh, and coming out. Uh, so be looking for those. Uh, and, and again, uh, this is probably not a bad place to to, to, to put in uh, that any time. And, and I'll speak on behalf of both the Auditor State and State Board of Accounts, and I'm sure they'll, they'll support me on this. Anytime you have any feedback, whether it be on from one of our divisions, or, or if you see something that we're that we could do better, or that we we not doing that we we could be doing, uh, we need that feedback. We want that feedback, um, uh, and so uh, we want you to understand that you're a critical partner in this process. And, and, and again, it goes back to our whole mission of serving you. So don't hesitate to give me or our audit, uh, state auditor Klutz or or state examiner Joyce uh, any kind of feedback. Uh, our doors are open. Our lines are, are available, our emails are available, and, and uh, I can assure you that we all respond uh, and do it as quickly as possible. Uh, Jenny Banks uh, is our Director of Communications. Um, we have an uh, administrative assistant that uh, answers the phones for us, answers questions. We take dozens of calls every day uh, on behalf of taxpayers, asking questions anywhere from exemptions and deductions to to uh, to who do I call to get my cat out of the tree? So, uh, uh, we, <laughs> believe me, we we take uh, you know I know there's stories out there. Your 911 systems, uh, your 911 uh, offices taking uh, calls. We we take some calls too. So uh, uh, we we could write a book about that, right, Ricky? Uh, about the calls that we take. So uh, um, and we're you know we do not we do not avoid the taxpayer. Um, and and I, my charge is we don't hand anybody off when they call and they have a question that should go to state board of accounts. Um, we 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 do not say well you need to call them. We'll we'll hand them off uh, professionally. Uh, and and state board of accounts and auditor state does the same thing. We we don't just tell them well you got to you, you got to call enough different numbers. So I I encourage you to to be very cognizant about customer service. Um, you know, we're in a tough, tough situation, uh, regardless of, of COVID. Uh, you know, being an elected official, being an appointed official, dealing dealing with the, the taxpayer and the general public is not easy. I don't care what side of the aisle or what side of the desk or whether you're in the private or public sector. Uh, but I can tell you that, that, that good, good quality service is going to go a long way uh, to making your job easier and uh, doing the little things will will help immensely. So, our charge, my charge to my staff is is to uh, uh, we don't make anybody call somebody else back, um, and we do everything we can to get them to the right person. If we're not, if they happen to call us and we're not the right person to answer, we don't try to answer state board of accounts questions, but um, we, we we make sure that we connect them to state board of accounts and not just rely on them to call back. So. Just a little customer service uh, 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 soapbox, uh, and then of course uh, uh, we do have a fiscal analyst that uh, that's part of our department to help us with our budget. Uh, I encourage you another another best practice that I learned very early in my um, in my public career as a fiscal officer is 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 to is, is to understand that that if I'm the smartest guy in the room or smartest person in the room, we're in trouble. So uh, I always make a point to either hire or uh, encircle myself or bring together a group of people that are smarter than me, uh, and, and, and that's been very successful for me. So uh, uh, my staff is small, but uh, again, I say small but mighty. Uh, we're out there to uh, – uh, have I gone over, Ricky, a little bit? Mike, Mike. Okay. Okay. I, I, I can shut up and, and uh, I can go on for a long time, <laughs> as you know. So uh, let's uh, let's 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 kind of leave it there at, at that point, and, and then uh, let's make sure we get questions answered. Or actually, it's your turn, right? It's your turn. Yep, it's going to okay. be our turn, and then we'll let them ask questions yeah. at the end. 
because I can, I've got a few other points that I'll make during the Q and A session. So, um, um, and I think I covered, you know, I covered pretty much, you know, at, at a very high level because that's what we have time for. Uh, knowing that uh, this is a long-term relationship and, and uh, we're excited about it. So, uh, again, welcome to everybody. And uh, Ricky, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, thank you. I'm actually yeah, going I'm to. I think you have to unshare. Unshare. Okay. So unshare. Here you are. Oh, maybe I maybe I did it. I made okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to Lori and she's gonna do um our part. Cool. Am I doing it right or am I backwards again? Can you see it? Okay. <laughs> good to be. Okay, good. <laughs> Again, I apologize. I'm not the best in technology. That's why I keep oh, glad I've got Ricky around to keep me on the straight and narrow. So we're going to bat up clean or back clean up here um, on this. The whole point of this presentation, um, if it's not been clear up to this point, and I hope it has been, is that you know there isn't one state that we are separate agencies in there as Wes has already pointed out if you call the wrong one it's not it's not the end of the world we'll get you to the right person but we just wanted to give you an overview so you kind of understand how the role uh, how those roles work um, and that um, so we're not again fobbing you off if you call us about a budget question call state board of accounts about a budget question or settlement question that we're going to turn you over to the experts in that but we'll we'll assist you um, and again, don't hesitate to, to reach out um, at any time, but just be aware that there are, um, again, other agencies that we may be turning you over to. So the State Board of Accounts is primarily the audit agency for the state. And we're going to talk a little bit more about an audit. I want to talk about what Ricky and I do as county director, directors first, um, which also plays into um, uh, the audit itself. Um, but we are tasked, State Board of Accounts is tasked by statute with providing uniform compliance and accounting guidance for all political subdivisions. So if you have questions on accounting, posting, reconciling, your chart of accounts, financial reporting, those are the questions that come to Ricky and I. Um, there are always some areas that are not clear cut, um, and so we've received questions um, that we may not be able to answer, um, but as much as possible, we'll try to get you answers or find you people who get you answers. And again, if there's another expert like DLGF or Auditor State that could better answer your question, we're going to work with you uh, to loop them in and make sure that those um, answers are correct. The three agencies do work together. We meet monthly um, to, as the three agents, try to make sure that we are giving consistent answers um, so you're not getting different responses depending on who you talk to which is very frustrating. Um, and as you get more comfortable with what each agency does, you're going to direct your uh, questions accordingly. Um, and that just feeds up the time to getting your answer um, if you're sending it right to the source of where you need the answer. But again, don't ever hesitate um, to ask, ask questions um, from any of the agencies and we'll get you in the right direction. So Ricky and I, we work in the director's unit. We specialize in providing guidance to counties. Um, we do have two directors that specialize in cities and towns, libraries and special districts, and two other directors that specialize in schools and townships. Um, we try to be as consistent as possible in our guidance among those political subdivisions so that, again, um, we are giving you the same answer. You do need to be aware that sometimes there are statutes for a city or town that is not applicable to a county, so there can be different answers um, when we're talking about compliance issues. Uh, we do back each other up as much as possible. So if you call, like if someone were to call right now, neither Ricky or I are available, so there would be another director that would take that call. Um, so you may speak with one of the other directors, um, and, and that's okay. Um, if they can answer the question, they will. If they need more, um, they think we need to answer it, then they'll let you know that we'll be getting back with you or, or um, calling you back. Um, we are going to be working on updating the manuals as probably our number one project next year, especially the auditor's manual, and the, but also the treasurer's manual. Um, we do provide training at various times throughout the year to elected officials and other employees. Uh, we are your consultants for, for accounting questions, for compliance questions. 
And this uniform guidance that we are training you on is also the uniform guidance that you are audited against. So it is important information going forward. Indiana statute in 5-11-12 states that the State Board of Accounts shall formulate, prescribe, and install a system of accounting and reporting. And that's what we are doing with our county bulletins and our manuals. Uh, the bulletins are on our website for 10 years, um, and then we update them. Um, and, and if the articles are kept going forward, we're going to update them for current and, and keep them going forward for another 10 years. Um, the manuals, again, do need to be updated, but there are still good information in them. There are procedures for your offices as far as things like settlement or your cash book or um, tax sale. Um, that, so it's, it, it is a lot of, still a lot of good information. There are some um, references to the statutes and maybe to some agencies that have changed uh, that we definitely need to be updating. Um, we are working on changing our website, um, and hopefully by the end of the month, the beginning of next month, we will have a much more user-friendly uh, search engine that's going to allow you to search by topic and bring up everything, whether it's a bulletin article or a chapter in the um, chapter in the in the manual itself or a directive um, that deals with the topic that you're asking. Um, we've been working on this all year. We're really kind of excited about it. Um, if you've used our search engine before, it doesn't always give you, gives you a lot more audit reports than anything else. So we're really excited that this will be coming through. And in addition to the manuals and bulletins, which is and directives, which are our uniform guidance, we do have prescribed forms um, for you to use for accounting and financial reporting. Many of these forms have been replaced by software, uh, software reports. We do not certify, like DLGF, we do not certify software systems for accounting. Uh, you are free to choose whatever software vendor that you would like to work with. Um, during an audit, we're going to review the reports and the outputs of those software systems and either approve the alternative forms or reports that are generated or request that you get revisions or updates to make it work. Um, but there's not a problem with having a software system. Most, almost all the counties have a software system rather than keep the manual records. Often when we train, we train on the manual forms just so that you get how the workflow or how the accounting information should flow because it's the same flow should be incorporated into your financial software. You are also required to comply with state law, Indiana code, federal law, grant agreements, contracts, and your local policies, so your county ordinances um, and the policies established. When we audit, we look at the transactions that happened um, in the past. So when we come in to audit in 2021, we're looking at 2020. If you're concerned um, that something you may, that you're doing right now may be at risk or may not be the right way to do it, that's a good time to call Rick or I and ask for an audit position on that. How are you going to deal with this during an audit? We can't, we don't give you permission to do something. We just tell you how we would look at it during an audit and what kind of information or documentation you should have. Um, and then you take that information into your management decision of whether or not to go ahead with that transaction. And then as I, I pointed out, as we started, we are the audit agency for the state. So that is one of our primary roles. We audit local units. Um, and state uh, agencies, and, but this does include counties. Uh, we place an opinion on the financial statements of the unit. So we come in, look at your financial statement, which is in your annual financial report that the auditor puts on, uh, uploads to Gateway each year. Uh, we look at that financial statement and the notes of that financial statement, and we place an opinion whether that information is materially correct, whether the readers of the financial statement can depend on that. Those readers can be your governing boards, they can be your citizens, they can be state agencies, they can be your uh, rating agencies, they can be banks when you're looking at financing. All of those are looking at those financial statements and the, wanting to know what that opinion is. We also audit for compliance with federal grants and for any unit that disperses more than $750,000 in a calendar year from federal grant funds. And as you may or may not be aware, the CARES um, relief fund that was issued for 2020 uh, made a lot of units that were not previously federal audits become federal audits. So there's going to be a lot more federal auditing in the future. Uh, we audit for compliance with state laws, local ordinances, and policies with the uniform compliance guidelines that we issue, our manuals and bulletins and examiner directives. 
We issue audit reports for each unit that we audit. These are public documents. They're available on the website. Um, and if you have any questions in finding them or searching them, let us know. We do issue financial audit reports that include our opinion on the financial statement and the results of our federal program audit. We can issue a supplemental report for any audit findings, either uh, for, <coughs> excuse me, audit findings, uh, which are often called ARCs, audit report and comments um, that are reportable. Um, and so there's often, there, if you look at our website and you're looking at reports, there's gonna be a financial and possibly a federal, and there's gonna be a supplemental as a separate report. Um, you can go right now to uh, our website and search and find the last audit report for your county. We certainly recommend you do that. Look at the supplemental audit, see if there were any comments specifically for your office. So it will say county auditor, county treasurer, um, and any findings that we have. Okay. We do issue management letters in addition to financial reports, but those management letters are not public documents. They are given to the specific elected officer and the governing board. Those would be kept within the county. You may or may not um, find those. Hopefully they would be part of the documents that are turned over to you when you accept your office, if there are management letters for your particular office. We can also issue verbal comments, um, and these occur during the audit. They're usually exchanged only between the elected official, and they're not gonna be in any written form, so you're really probably not gonna know about those um, until you're audited. But we do require each office to resolve any finding, especially the ones that appear in the report. So that's why we're saying go back and look at your um, audit report for your county and see if there's any audit comments for your office. Um, we do not want those to become repeat findings. If they are, then there is a process, a, a corrective action plan that has to be done. We'll be doing more training on that in the future. But that is one of the things that should be left for you. If there was a corrective action plan in process for your office, that is something that your uh, predecessor, auditor, or treasurer should leave in place for you um, to look at. If you have any questions about that, give Rick or and I a call. The repeat findings is new in 2018. And that's where there's gonna be a written corrective action plan. Okay. And again, I've, I kind of jumped ahead on this. Um, if your office had any repeat findings, it will say so in the report. It will say this is a repeat of a, of a prior report and the report number it was in. If you have any questions about it, if you see a repeat finding but you don't find a corrective action plan, we can get you a copy of it. Um, we do encourage all offices as much as possible to have established written policies and procedures for receiving, depositing, posting, dispersing, reconciling. These can be modified as you start operations. So as you have new staff or new resources, you're gonna to wanna to look those over and make sure they continue to work. Um, we don't recommend that you wholesale pitch the whole lot and start from scratch. Uh, that's a whole lot of work. Um, but so instead, just look at what is there, see what works and what doesn't and make modifications as you need to. On the website, you will find our internal control manual and additional information on internal controls. Uh, just a shameless plug here, Ricky and I love internal controls. We love to talk about them. We love to brainstorm on that. We can probably put you to sleep with our discussions on internal controls, but do not ever hesitate to ask us. We cannot write your internal controls for you. That is a county decision. That's your office decision based on your resources, your staff, your software. Um, how your procedures work, but we are more than happy to brainstorm on what might might not work or things that you may or may not be considering. There is a webinar on our website uh, that just talks about internal controls in general, what they are, what the components are. Um, we do encourage um, that you, um, well, you are required to do some sort of training, either watch the video or read the, the, read the actual manual itself um, after you take office and certify that you have looked at those internal control training. Um, and again, establish written procedures or update the procedures for your office. You cannot know everything you need to know on January 1st to get you through even the next year or the next four years. We can't teach you everything in one day of training. What we hope to do with this training uh, this week, not too far, um, is to provide you some resources, give you some general overview, know where to ask, 
you know, what did, where should I reach out to DLGF or my field rep? When should I reach out to the other state's office with Kim and with Jamie? When should I call Ricky or Lori? Um, when do I, you know, if you're, and you're confused about any of it, reach out to any of us and we would be glad to help you um, get your answers, get your issues resolved to the best of our ability to do so. Um, you do have wonderful resources available within your own association and with the Association of Indiana Counties. Don't forget to talk to them. Um, they can also provide a lot of information and support. Come to your state called conferences or virtually if we're still in that. Network with your fellow auto auditors and treasurers around the state. They can serve as mentors to you as well. And I think that is the end of my slideshow. How'd I do? I'm sorry. We're almost on time. <laughs> You're, it's okay. okay. We got 10 minutes. So I am going to move everybody so that you will have control of your camera and your microphone. So to see, um, and because we that we do ask a question or introduce yourself to us. If you would tell us your name, what county you're from, and whether you have the auditor or the treasurer. I'm thinking it's going. Find something new. Is it not going to make I selected them all? It's thinking about it, I think. Like not wanting to do them all at once. Give me a second, guys. Sorry. Well, Sometimes you can start talking I... while she works on this. Okay. Yeah, you can. <laughs> no, you know, it's nothing like letting a former elected official get hand the microphone to a former elected official, right, Kim? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, a couple things. Um, first of all, um, I, I just I, I continue to be impressed with the the level of, of collaboration communication between our our agencies uh, i know it's our job uh but uh it it, it, it several several many many years ago it, it just there wasn't this good of communication so uh you know ricky and 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 kim and Lori and and the rest of the staff um continue to do an outstanding job so so thank you ladies for 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 your work. Uh, and by the way, do we ha we do we have a triad meeting this afternoon? We do at one o'clock. Okay, one o'clock. Okay, great. Um, we do. So uh, so we we do we we take this very seriously and and, our, and our, so let me let me just share a few thoughts. Um, first of all, a couple of things that I learned uh, early on, even before I got into to public life, is that it, it's important to to, to evaluate your staff. Uh, evaluate your staff, be honest with, with yourself, be honest with them, have them be honest with you. We all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses. So evaluate your staff and, and, and their strengths and weaknesses, and then don't hesitate to delegate. Nobody can do do it all. And and if you're trying to do it all, or if you have somebody trying to do it all, it's not not only fair to them, but it's not fair to your other staff. So, so, so continue to evaluate and, and delegate. Um, these these standard operating procedures, written standard operating procedures, it sounds simple. It, 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 they're not easy, but they are critical uh, to your success. And, and, and whether it be bank racks or or whatever, know your calendar um, and, and and prioritize your tasks and and based on your calendar. Don't obviously start something. That's due in July, and, and don't emphasize it now when you've got an AFR that's due in 60 days, um, or 100 R, or, or whatever. So, so know your calendar, go over that with your staff, and understand who's going to do what when. Uh, your year-end duties uh, are part of that uh, as well. So these these are a couple things, and then establish your gateway, uh, establish your gateway uh, sign-in. Um, so contact DLGF. Uh, uh, the gateway at dlgf.in.gov. Uh, that gate, that's the email address. Gateway at dlgf.in.gov, uh, and and get yourself established on Gateway. So um, uh, be on time, be accurate, provide the best customer service. Ricky, that was super nice. Very good. Thank you. 
All right, do we have any uh, questions out there? I've got some stuff coming in chat, people saying thank you, um, you know, and, and announcing who they are. Does anybody would like, you know, like to t ask any questions or just tell, you know, introduce yourself to us? Anyone? <laughs> Hi, I'm Susan Beyer. I'm the Hamilton County Treasurer Elect. And I worked in the office for 13 years, um, haven't for the last two years, but excited about getting started and terrified all at the same time. <laughs> oh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I, uh, for the, for our new treasurers, I, I will say that the um, the treasurer state has a wonderful investment program that you ought to at least look into. Um, so, so contact one of the first things I would I would recommend. Uh, and again, I use them. I, I know firsthand uh, the quality of work that the uh, that Kelly and her staff do, uh, Treasurer Mitchell. Uh, so, so one of the things one of the first things I would suggest you do is to at least contact them, introduce yourself. Get to know them a little bit and 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 see see what they have that may be uh, of interest uh, to Hamilton County or to any county out there in the county treasurers from an investment standpoint because that I know the investment returns aren't aren't nearly what they what what they've been in the past but but still you need to maximize those and they've got they've got some tools that, that you might be surprised about that would be very helpful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Just to say hi, give us a face to a name, ask any questions, because they're fully trained. They... <laughs> Come on, I went first. I had a rough campaign, so. <laughs> oh. Let me let me let me throw out another one, ladies, uh, gentlemen. Um, I would I would also, especially from an auditor standpoint, I would pick up your um, if, if you haven't already done so, and you can do it today if you want. They're very easy to come by. Uh, the, I'm curious to see what the State Board of Accounts is going to do with their website because it was pretty darn good before. So, uh, um, but um, I, I would pick up your last audit uh, and look at that, uh, and maybe your last two audits. Uh, and, and look at those and, and, and get a baseline for, for where the, uh, for, for where your, the county was previously. Uh, get some idea of, of when they may be showing up next so that you can be preparing for that. Cause that's something that, that with, with a lot of the changes that have come here recently, and maybe you've already talked about this lady, so, so shut me up if, if you have, but, uh, but, um, I really like what the State Board of Accounts has done with, uh, helping, uh, units be on time. And, and be on track for auditing by requiring uploads of your of your monthly reconciliations and and so on and so forth. There they can talk more about that. But to pick up that audit and understand what you're required to do on a monthly basis to upload to to be prepared for your audit. Plan on the end of this week having a whole discussion on Gateway <laughs> and all <Good>. those uploads. So I've got some, um, oh, let's see here. Uh, we got somebody said that they were using the first 100 days chart. I think that was given um, by the Treasurer's Association out. Um, uh, and so they said it's a really good tool to help them get going. So if you are an incoming treasurer, if you reach out to your association, um, if you haven't received that yet, um, I do know, I think Jessica is the one that had that. Um, so that, that's a really good resource. Anybody uh, else just want to at least say hi? Yeah, Edgar's got a question. Uh, the Gateway, yes, you can you can contact Gateway. I uh, should be able to contact Gateway now and get your login and password uh, for Gateway. Just tell them the commissioner said so. We're also going to have information on that, too, on Thursday um, with okay. everything that you need. So. Great. I saw somebody wave at the bottom. Can you wave? How do you wave? Do you wave? Uh -oh. Hi. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I'm I'm Jolene. I'm Franklin County, Indiana, uh, replacing Veronica Volker. Um, little nervous, 
scared. Been in the office for six years. So I'm glad to know that there's a lot of help out there. Absolutely. We're here. Don't be scared. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> use your staff. Use your staff. Use your experience. Okay. Use use the experience you have around you. I got a couple others down here. Uh, is it Tiffany? I think she just waved. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Tiffany. I'm from Grant County. Um, I was caucused in as treasurer back in 2018, but this was my first election, so now I am the treasurer-elect. Um, and this will actually be my second year in the treasurer's seat, but I've been in the office in total for eight years. So. Oh, congratulations and welcome. <laughs> Go and look for more people who are waiting. Oh wait, did I have a letter? Anybody else? Well, a couple. One more. One more thought that I took a note on. Uh, if, if um, and I know that that many of you have probably been in the office before, or or maybe coming over from the um, from another uh, elected official. Don't don't hesitate um, after a proper evaluation to make some changes. Um, you know, not just change for change, but to, but but to but, and not to stir things up. But but you know, change is not all bad. Uh, and and don't don't be uh, don't be afraid to take a little bit of a risk and, and make a few changes where it makes sense. Okay. Well, if we don't have anybody else, um, it's noon. We're gonna kind of well, wait, wait. Somebody just turned their camera on. I think it's Elaine. <laughs> Sorry, I'm calling you out, but if you turn your camera on. And <laughs> All right, Elaine, you want to tell us who you are? Where are you from? Got to unmute. Mute. Hold on. Now try it. Okay, I'm from Rockport, Indiana, Spencer County, and this is my first term for the treasurer's office. I've been in the surveyor's office for 16 years, so it's completely Different, really excited, and nervous all at the same time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, with it being noon, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to mute you, Elaine, because I'm getting feedback. Um, we're going to go ahead and break from this session. Um, just to give treasurers a break, we'll have some lunch real quick because we do have a uh, another session for the treasurers um, for accounting overview and resources that start at one. Auditors just had theirs, um, so we will release you all from this today. We are so glad that you all came and joined. Uh, we will be recording this, and as soon as we get it up on the website, we will let you know in your next session. Okay. So thank you all for joining, and uh, congratulations. Thanks, everyone. Good to see you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy holidays to everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Wes. Thanks, Kim. We really, really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye.